Jigampa tape your mouth. Another diet book has hit the shelves. This time it's written and tested by a scientist who has studied obesity in her professional life. We welcome Dr. Amanda Sainsbury Sellers. Good morning, Doctor. Good morning. This, uh, you are actually literally your own guinea pig for this. That's right. For a long time ago, I was actually obese. I was 93 kilos and like many people who were trying to lose weight, I had tried every diet under the sun. And although every system would work initially, I would lose a little bit of weight. What would happen after uh, losing a few kilos, I'd, st I'd stop losing weight even though I was still doing all the right things and I would start feeling really hungry. And this barrier, I wanted to know why it was I couldn't get over this barrier inside my body. And that's why I decided to start medical research so I could understand it and get around the problem. Well, we saw some photographs of you um, as, as a younger woman because you've succeeded. You, there you go. How old were you then? I was Teenager? 20. 20, yes. okay. So as a scientist, you wanted to discover what these barriers were. Okay, what is the theory? Okay. Of, of, uh, of your book. What I learned in my medical research is that whenever you start losing weight, it doesn't matter what method you use, sooner or later your body will sense that you're losing weight and it will kick off a famine reaction, which is designed to stop you from losing more weight. And if you've ever tried to lose weight, you probably will have noticed some of the six signs of the famine reaction. Mm -hmm. So the first of these is that you might feel, you'll feel naggingly hungry. It's a, a different kind of hunger. So in the early days of a diet, you'll feel comfortably hungry and your mm -hmm. diet portions might satisfy you. But when your famine reaction is activated, your diet portions no longer... You just want more. It's like, OK, I've had my diet. So it goes back to um, you know, ancient times where the body goes into starvation. You must retain that fat for the bad times. Exactly. OK, what's the a next sign? Another sign is the lethargy, feeling lethargic. This is another way your body uses to conserve energy and stop you from wasting away. Mm -hmm. And a third sign is <clears throat> that you can feel very cold. And that's because the famine reaction really drops your metabolic rate. And a lot of people notice that they feel really shivery, they need to wear a cardigan in summer, for example, mm -hmm. when they're having a famine reaction. Mm -hmm. And this drop in metabolism leads to the fifth sign of the famine reaction, which is that your weight loss just plateaus. You stop losing weight even though you're doing all the right things, and you notice very fast, rapid rebound weight gain. Mm -hmm. So, now we've established that, what's the answer? Well, as I was doing my medical research, I came across an astounding piece of information. And that is that you can reverse or switch off the famine reaction simply by eating the types and amounts of mostly nutritious foods that really satisfy you. And I decided to put this to the test myself. Mm -hmm. And most of the time as I was losing 28 kilos, I wouldn't feel too hungry and I'd eat the kind of light and nutritious foods we know we all have to eat to lose weight. But every now and then I'd have a famine reaction. And I said, OK, if I want to get over this famine reaction, I have to eat my way out of it. And I did. I... So as soon as you felt those, um, those symptoms of famine reaction, several you just mentioned, you ate. What did you eat? Yes. Well, sometimes my famine reaction would make me so hungry that the only thing that would satisfy me was a cheese fondue and yeah. that would really satisfy me. Someone else who's lost weight this way found that a proper roast dinner with roast potatoes mm -hmm. and gravy and a dessert would satisfy her famine reactions and she's lost seven kilos in seven months. So you then go and eat anything you want? I ate anything. I, of course I don't go and eat fish and chips and chocolates mm. uh, to satisfy that famine reaction. Nutritious foods, the kind of home cooked foods that, that you'd eat. So we have what, lots of fruit and vegetables, That's good, right. low fat meals. So you eat low fat meals most of the time and when that famine reaction kicks in, eat anything you want. Uh, within reason, you need to, the key about the famine reaction is that to activate it, you need to get the kilojoules into your body and you also need to get the nutrients into your body. Mm -hmm. So if you eat whatever you want and that's just chocolate and junk food, mm -hmm. then it's not going to settle the famine reaction. You also um, um, refer to the fat break. What does that mean? Yes, so just as your body has a famine reaction which stops you from losing weight, you also have a fat break that prevents you from gaining weight. So let's say you gain a kilo or so over the holidays. We've seen in the laboratory that your fat break then <clears throat> cuts your appetite and revs up your metabolic rate. 
So if you simply make a habit of eating only when you feel hungry and stopping when you've honestly had enough, your fat break can do a marvellous job of protecting you from gaining weight and also maintaining weight. If I could weight. eat only when I was hungry, <laughs> I wouldn't have a problem. But you don't have a problem, <laughs> Carrie Ann. And I think that. So basically, good fruit and vegetables, a moderate diet, and then when you let yourself go, don't feel too guilty and do it day after day after day. Stop then. That's right. Mm. You know, your, famine, your fat break will help you get back to where you, where you and are. And of course, you know, then there's activity. You've got to keep um, active and, and move and just sort of be moderate. Exactly. Mm. The physical so no calorie counting, no, you know, the high protein, low carbohydrate, all those sort of things. Just, just do it moderately, a little bit of everything. It boils down to connecting with your body and mm -hmm. listening to your body and understanding that mm. when you feel hungry, you do have to eat and mm. you don't have... You need to eat carrots and diet food, you need to eat real food. Yeah, it's, and it's important to know if you're going to lose a substantial amount of weight, it will take time. There's no shortcuts to long-term weight loss. Well done. That's well, right. thank you very much. It's always interesting to see and hear another aspect of, uh, of weight loss, but it's great to talk to you. Thank you, Kerry.